Hello and welcome to Vancouver Carpenter drywaller today for sure. So today I'm going to show you guys how I like to do my corners because a while back you guys asked me about the corner tools I use. So in my kit here I have a bunch of tools and let's start with the flushers. So this is a flusher. Uh, careful they've got sharp edges right here. Uh, I just accidentally cut myself putting my hand on one. But this is a two and a half inch one, and then we have a three inch one, and then we have a three and a half inch one. So the reason there's a hole in these ones is these ones are actually intended to have mud pushed out of them while you're finishing, so you don't have to apply the mud first. You could do it in one pass. They don't work though. So I actually just removed it, and this one I left it on. But these function as this one does, which is just a plain normal flusher. And it's kind of like a corner tool, one of those wing tools you guys are talking about on a pole. So we've got it on this pole here. Now, in order to get the mud into the angle first, I like to use a compound tube. So it's just a giant mud syringe, water cannon in the summer. I like squirting my kids with this thing, it's hilarious. But what we're going to use for that is this better than ever corner tool. So. It just looks like a little toy train, but it actually rolls in the corner and applies mud both from this hole, those holes, and that holes. So I use the two and a half or three inch for taping, and I use the three and a half for finish coating. And when you're taping, you also use this to apply mud into the corner. And then comes the corner roller. So this is what makes the nice square corner and embeds the tape. So I have a room with enough corners to justify using these, so let's get in there and use them. So forgive the crinkly noise, there's plastic all over the floor. But I've got my four inch knife and pan, I've got a tape spool tucked into my pocket, I've got the tube, roller, and we are going to start with the three inch flusher today. So some days, how I like to do this, in fact, most of the time I use my super taper and I just apply the wet sloppy tape into the corner and I go over it with a two and a half inch. And it comes out adequate and it's very fast. But this video, we're gonna be doing the best practices so I can show you the best results that this system can give. So you need some really runny taping mud. Like it's gotta be quite runny. And we get this, like the giant mud syringe. I don't have much in here, so I gotta tip my bucket. It makes great sounds. Really, really flattering. And I just apply the mud in the corner, and we'll take some close ups of it in a minute. And you just gotta do the right pressure, you gotta be quick. If you get the wrong amount of mud in, it makes a huge mess or your tape doesn't stick. A little light down there, that should be good. So I crease my tape, like so. So I also have any gaps in the corners pre-filled. And yeah, I just put the tape in the corner. Let's take a look at that and see how it looks before we get to it. You can see it just kind of lays the mud in there like so. Not too pretty. Next comes the corner roller. So you can see the tape is now nicely creased and it's got that mud along the outside that's going to cover the tape. So when doing it this way I like the 3 inch because I need a wider head to actually make sure I do a good job with all that mud there. So I'm going to start in the bottom, oh, 9 foot ceilings, let's get a little extra length. That wasn't actually that bad for a first pass. I'm gonna go one more down and we'll take a look. So it actually leaves a really nicely feathered edge, as you can see. There's like virtually no edge there. And it even puts a little bit of mud over top of the tape, which is what you want. 
you don't want to just wipe the mud out and just have a cleanly feathered edge. You actually want mud over top of the tape because it's like a first coat. And it leaves a mess in the corners. We'll get to those in a minute. So I'm now going to go across the whole room. I like to do the whole room at once because it's good enough to do that. Yeah, sloppy. It could take a bit to get the touch of this. What I heard somebody describe it as is it's like an accordion. So you have to pull with this arm as you push with this one or it won't move. So I usually do this part on stilts because it makes this a lot easier but I don't have them today. When you get to the corner you take your four inch knife or whatever, tear it, makes a nice corner. Ah, a bench! Look at that. Start in the middle because it's going to stretch. is essential. Without the roller, you just don't get crisp corners, in my experience. Because the roller places that mud right at the outside of the tape, ready to just flush it so nicely. And then a quick run around the room with this thing. like it could use one more pass. Next we clean up the tops and bottoms. It's just a quick wipe. So what we're going for is to have it all look like this. Nicely coated. So when you have the right amount of mud that's what it looks like. Sometimes you don't have enough mud and it will look like this with a hard edge. So it's just not enough mud, but I'm okay with that today. This is just a closet. Okay, then we have a mess like this. What do we do with that? So we do my three-way corner wipe. So I'm just really quickly, I'm not gonna spend much time in here. I'm just gonna go wipe, right-hand side, wipe, right-hand side, wipe, right-hand side, and I'm gonna walk away from that. Don't care about any of those lines at this point. And on some of those really bad ones, at this stage, I might just take my knife and go like that. Just to make the next coat go better. Look at that rusty knife. That looks brutal. So these corners are mostly dry overnight. They're actually a little bit wet, but I find it super, super important to actually sand my corners, even though they look that good. They just need to be sanded really quickly so you're not picking up trash on your next pass. So, and it's a really quick sand. For the final coat, it needs to be super thin, like ridiculously thin to get it to work nicely. Plugged in drills work super awesome too. So that's thin, that's soupy, and I'm even gonna give it just a little bit more. Watch when I mix, you'll see this big sploosh come up. see those you know it's thin enough so look how runny this stuff is I mean like unworkably runny but that's how you need it 
Otherwise the edges don't feather well and it doesn't move nicely. Okay, let's get the giant farting mud splooger. with this thing but I probably put the mud in just a tiny bit heavy in some spots right there is kind of perfect we'll see if it makes a giant mess then it's too heavy so I now have my three and a half inch flusher I used the three inch for uh, bedding the tape Couple passes, come back. Yeah, you're in the way. There we go. Oh, this one's gonna be a mess. There's so much in that corner. So that is why tapers are so messy. You heard those drips all over the place. But let's get a good up close look. So as you can see, for the most part, it really feathers that edge actually quite well. It leaves a nice crisp corner in there. And it was pretty fast and easy. Okay, so what do we do with that horrible mess? So on the last one, I used a four inch knife. This time I'm using a five inch knife. The last time I did all the right hand sides. So this time I'm going to do all the left hand sides. And there we are, one two, three, and I couldn't do the fine stuff while I was holding the camera, but then you might just, you know, get in there and just kind of tune up stuff like that. But I'm gonna leave that because it's gonna scrape out and coat nicely for my last coat. The last thing I do to complete my angles is I quickly run this sander, which is a great sander, into the corners and then after that it's a couple of quick passes on the edge with a regular pole sander just to feather down the edge and they're done. And the only spot I really need to look over is where joints intersect in the corners. It usually takes just a little bit of sponging to get out a little niblets I may have left. But corner tools I would say if you're doing any reasonable amount of drywall corner tools are a fantastic investment. They cut my time down so much. They're the one tool I wouldn't do drywall without. So as you can see, the finished product looks really nice. I've always been happy with it, even though it's only about three inches. I mean, sure you can do it by hand and it can be like five inches out by knife, but you know what? I find this is adequate under almost every circumstance. And the tool that really makes it is this corner roller. Without the corner roller, it's not gonna be as square and as straight. This is essential in the kit. Anyways, that's how I like to do my corners. And if you're looking for any of these tools, I'll put the link in the description below. Thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. You want to support the channel, do all those like, subscribe things. I hope this sheds a little light into how these tools get used. If you use them differently, let me know in the comments. 
Anyways, thanks for watching, you guys. Until the next video.